welcome to Films and Stuff with your hosts, Pete Mitchell and Ethan Hunt. Pete, welcome back. How are you today? I'm very well, Ethan. How are you? I'm great. Are you looking forward to this episode as much as I am? Uh, yes and no. That's a pregnant pause. That yeah. Was a- that was a very pregnant pause. Yeah. Tell me, so, tell me the yes and tell me the no. The yes is, I imagine that, or I hope that you have the same feelings as I do on mixed emotions on this show, <laughs> on this uh, movie we're about to discuss. And no, because I know what movie we're about to discuss. Well, I, I have to say, I'm going to, I'm taking an optimistic perspective. Uh, which is against my default position, but I'm taking an optimistic perspective. I'm really looking forward to this. When, when we reveal the movie that we're going to uh, review, uh, I, I agree that the, the movie has its uh, warts or pimples, shall we say. But that being said, I think there's a lot to talk about with this film. And uh, even sometimes movies that are don't fulfill my expectations, or I think are a little bit rubbish, are actually kind of more fun to talk about with you, right? Oh, yeah. If it's, if it's a masterpiece, if it's a masterpiece, you and I can just call it a day, uh, you know, give it a good ranking, and uh, we're done. We're yeah. out in five minutes. That's right. <laughs> right. So so sometimes it's uh, uh, red notice, ahem, yeah? And, and, <sighs> shows, and, 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 you know, shows like that, I think sometimes are more fun to review because it lets you – you know, play armchair quarterback or, you know, rethink some things that, uh, you know, we think could have been done differently. So tell tell the audience, let's do the big reveal. Okay. What so, movie are we reviewing today? Well, okay. So one thing first. It's not going to be much first. of a reveal because if anyone who's subscribing will have seen the <laughs> description. The title. The title. <laughs> That's right. So they would have seen the title. So uh, without further ado, let's talk about the 355. The three five five, yes. Wah, wah. Uh, so, so first, uh, what do you think of the title? <laughs> I so. What do you think of the title? I think it's easy. fine. I think it was a generic title. Well, okay, it's not well, a generic title. I will give you that. Yeah. Uh, the lore behind the title also interesting. Yeah, that's Anything a very else? good way to say it. There is, there is meaning. There is significance behind this, you know? I mean, sometimes it's a movie like The Hateful Eight, Ocean's Eleven, so on and so forth, and the number is kind of, like, obvious. Yeah. Here, the number is not at all obvious. Yeah. There's, it, it came in a very to, much a blink-or-you-miss-it moment towards the end of the movie. Yeah, yeah. It, it really probably requires Googling um, or some other type of research, right? Uh, to kind of understand what the three five five means. Yep. Yep. So, but so that what being the, said, just think, remind me, what does the three five five mean? Uh, so, the three five five was apparently the code name for a uh, female spy ring uh, back in the I don't know, I don't want to say Middle Ages. I know. Um, I think it was George Washington. I think yeah, so. Yeah, the, the Washingtonian era, right? Yeah, so Agent 355 was the code name, as you rightly said, is the code name for a supposed spy that was a female and was maybe the only female spy or not, we don't know. So they said, they say during the American Revolution, right? For the, right. And, the, and they say for the Patriots, right? So I mean, this is kind of a very American concept and it's from a very discreet period of time where... Right, uh, therein lies the first rub. Right. Right, but, is but, you're talking but, uh, about an American um, an American concept and an American led issue, not issue, an American led agency, and yeah. the there's only one American in this yeah. group, right? The rest right. are decidedly right. international for, for a very international team of right. women. Uh, I agree, it's it's a very American concept, but I mean, mm-hmm. it, it's kind of cool. I have to say, like, I like people who do research. They they. I, I, I learned something, um, but again, I don't really think that the title itself is like super compelling, you know? Yeah, okay, right, right. So it, that's what I mean by saying it seems kind of generic in the sense yeah. that... It seems forced. 
it seems like someone came across this this event, this factual, you know, this historical thing, and they're like, "That's super cool. How can we? How do we monetize know? that into a movie? Yes. Or how do we make that into a movie?" And yes. I think that's what it is. And I think that yeah. I think you've hit the nail on the head, yeah. which is to say, is it's so. Uh, on paper, it sounds like a cool, objectively cool thing. Oh, the yeah. Agent 355, the only yeah. female spy. Yeah. Whoa, it sounds yeah. amazing. But then yeah. I think the reality on the ground is that it's so, uh, yeah. it's such a specific lore item yeah. and it's such an obscure uh, yeah. item or, you know, yeah. fa- trivial fact. That yeah. you're just like, okay, I don't get it. And yeah. and and I get it. It's an agent it was a secret agent spy, uh female spy, right? Which yeah. that in its own uh, for that era is a surprising thing. But you know, if maybe there were another facet and I'm talking purely out of my butt on this, imagine if there were three hundred and fifty five of them. You know what I mean? Or there was some other yeah. relation, a tangible relation in today's yeah. world to the number 355, right? Yeah. Or we're 360 degrees are, forms the circle and the other five are the actual agents that cover the rest of the circle. Yeah. You know what I mean? These five agents yeah. cover the entire gamut. I don't know. Look, I, again, this is me being, uh, you know, I'm not exactly the the sharpest tool in the shed and I'm, like I just don't find that this is a super yeah. compelling yeah. thing in today's world. Well, actually, you know, it, it also means something to to say that I wasn't super enthusiastic about this movie, and one of the reasons was I didn't really know what that meant. It was it was said the three five five, and to be honest, I didn't really know what the three five five was. It, if it sometimes there is Mission Impossible, for example, a, a title that's so compelling. That it kind of gives you a positive view of the movie before you even see it or know who's in it. You're like, wow, Mission Impossible. That that sounds cool, right? The and it evokes honest, nostalgia, right? Which yes, this exactly. doesn't evoke anything. Yeah. So 355, to me, I was, I was confused. I didn't know what it was about. And I think that tempered my expectations because it's just not uh, an exciting title. Um, and and coming on to what we've spoken about in previous episodes, I think the yeah. in concept. Uh, so let's just give the users conceptually what the movie is about. It's about uh, a secret agent uh, who's a spy. Uh, this woman is on the trail of some MacGuffin. That MacGuffin, and she loses her partner chasing after this MacGuffin. Uh, the the partner is killed, and so she forms, uh, she goes off the books from the CIA or the FBI. I can't even remember what it was. I think it was the CIA. Um, CIA. She goes off the books uh, and she kind of goes off the reservation, which is to say, you know, she, she goes behind everyone's back and forms this cabal, not cabal, cadre say inform, of... Informal alliance. An inform, that. That's the best way of saying it, actually. It's an <laughs> informal and a very uneasy alliance because yeah. she blames one of the other women for the death of her partner. Yeah. And, you know, the these five women or four women plus one towards the end get together to get the MacGuffin back and solve this mystery and get everything back on track. Yeah. Uh, and then there's a couple of twists and turns, which, I mean, I don't know about you, uh, Ethan, but I saw it coming not a mile away. I saw it coming a hundred billion miles away. It was so obvious what was going to happen. That's fine. Uh, and, you know, it was just the moment you saw that scene where her partner is killed, you're just like, oh, well, is yeah. he though? You know, I mean, you know, all these... Oh, really? Twists. Spoiler alert. Spo- spoiler yeah, alert. Spoiler alert. Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw that coming on my... <laughs> Plot life. twist alert. Plot twist alert. Yeah. So, I, so yeah, anyway, well, I, so they go on this worldwide chase uh, and, you know, it's really a globetrotting adventure. Mm-hmm. They're in uh, they're in South America. They're in Europe. They're in China. They're all over the place. They get the MacGuffin. They save the day. And then they mm-hmm. disband at the end of the movie mm-hmm. with, the, with the understanding that when the time calls for it, they'll reform the group to continue their, their work, right? I mean, I, I think there's some very good. So, so maybe let's 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 break this down a little bit. 
Um, we said that we don't really like the, the title of the movie, but, you know, the movie could have overcome that. I think that this movie is, uh, like, the production value is very high, right? This Absolutely. is not an independent movie. They they did not spare expense on... $70 you know, million, dollars, not, not yeah, a small Yeah, I mean, they, they did not spare expense on locations, on production value, on wardrobe, on, on all those kind of other things. Um, and even on cast, I mean, this is a this is a very very um, the, well thought the of cast, cast is right? one of the best things going for it. This is a Jessica Chastain, Penelope cast. Cruz, Van Bingbing, Diane Kruger, Lupita, Sebastian Stan, right? Uh, Edgar Ramirez. I mean, this is a this very is a, uh, very yeah. great cast. But Pete, as you and I have highlighted previously. Sometimes there are too many cooks in the kitchen, right? And and I felt that this was a lot of folks kind of pushed together, and the star power tended to blind everybody, and, and it it didn't come together. I think that's my main criticism: is that the the cast didn't come together the way that I would have hoped it did, right? Yeah. So I think for so I don't I will say I agree with you in principle to what you said in the sense that. I think I don't think this was too many people. I think it was oh. fine in terms of number. I think it was good. I don't think there's a problem with that. Uh, as you pointed out earlier, we've seen movies like Ocean's Eleven, where you know you have twelve and thirteen. But what you hit the nail on the head. There was very little chemistry amongst all five of them. Yeah. So, yeah. like for example, uh, Lupita Nyong'o, yeah. great chemistry, yeah. I think, with everyone, right? I don't like. Yeah. I think she gelled well, especially with Jessica Chastain. I think she yeah. gelled well, even with Diane Kruger. I yeah. thought that was she was fine, but like I feel like everybody else, there was a little bit of not friction in a bad way. Friction in the sense that it, they didn't seem to work well together, and certainly uh, towards the you know latter mm. the the last third of the movie where they introduce um, Fan Bing Bing. Yeah. Uh, uh, she especially, I thought, had zero chemistry with all of them, regardless, yeah. right? And I was just like, I get, and yeah. this is where the cynic in me starts thinking, man, you know, at some point, you're adding cast members yeah. purely for, is this movie yeah. going to do well in China? I don't know. Let's throw a really famous Chinese yeah. actress into it. Yeah. Is this film going to do really well in Europe? I don't know. Let's throw in a really famous uh, European actress into it. Or Colombian, uh, or South American, or <laughs> Latin, or Indian, or whoever. I'm surprised. No they Canadians? Have, Why not I'm, Canadians? You know what shocked me? I'm surprised <laughs> that they didn't have Priyanka Chopra or another uh, South oh, Asian actress. That's coming so in. good. That's I'm, so good. Can I just be. take a Can I just take a moment to silence? That was an extremely good point. Well done. Keep so, well played. Thank you. My, thank you. My hand, as Mike Tyson would say, my hand is off to you. <laughs> so I for and and the way they've structured this movie is yep. obviously they're working towards yeah. if this was a critical or if this was a box office hit. I think they were definitely planning on making a sequel and a three a threequel. And I fully imagine that they would then start picking. Okay, let's go after uh, India. Yeah. Oh, let's go yeah. after Singapore and Southeast Asia. Yeah. Let's see if there's an Indonesian actress or an Australian actress. Or yeah. you know what I mean? And this again, I fully recognize that this is very cynical. But in today's yeah. age, in today's date, when you see a lot of quote unquote yeah. pandering by film yeah. uh, companies, like. Why isn't there uh, someone like, uh, uh, oh my God, Maggie Q, who actually has done a lot of action films, who is a kick-ass actor, who's done incredible move, uh, roles in action-heavy spy thriller kind of films and TV shows. I was surprised she isn't here, and I was just thinking, oh, you know what, they're probably saving her for the sequel. I, I hear you on the cynicism. So, but I still I, I disagree with your statement that there's not too many cooks in the kitchen. I, I think that it's just a lot of folks jumbled together. I mean, let's forget the storyline for a moment. You, you and I have seen plenty of films and television shows that have bad plots, bad dialogue, and so forth. 
And you know what? It's just because of the charisma of the characters or the actors mm-hmm. that we still kind of roll with it, you know? Sure. So I'm, I'm kind of okay with the plot. I mean, it's, it's pretty loopholy. It's, um, yeah, it's you know, super we can, generic. We can, we can pick it apart endlessly. And yeah. I think that's not really fair because to be honest, it is what it is. But I, I just felt like there were, what I thought this should have been is I thought this should have been Jessica Chastain, who I think is amazing, but I hate the characters that she's always playing. But I, she's an amazing actress. I think Diane Kruger, who is kind of her, let's say, European-German counterpart. I kind of like those two being the same person and seeing that kind of natural tension between those yeah, two. Yeah, butting they, heads. I agree. And then, and then they teamed up. And we've seen that kind of like with, uh, I don't know, there's multiple different examples, you know, where it was, you know, two males that kind of had the same personality and, and they got along, right? So either it has to be, you know, polar opposites night and day, or they have to be the same person. Um, and, and they kind of learn to, to like each other. Robson or Hobson, Hobson who? Hobson Shaw, that's right. Hobson Shaw, right? Yeah, The Great. Rock and so, Jason Statham. Yes. So this could have been Jessica Chastain, Diane Kruger, Hobson Shaw, and we would have loved them. And they could have thrown in someone like Fan Bing Bing at the end, and it would have been kind of cool. I didn't think that, I thought, you're right, Lupita, uh, was probably the best actress and the best character in here, but she wasn't really needed. And I felt that Penelope Cruz, who's maybe the biggest star and who I have my celebrity crush on, oh, wasn't yeah, really so. needed. So I felt like they could have kind of gotten rid of those two and he would have had a better film. And to be honest, it would have made a lot more sense. And, yeah, and that's think- kind of what, I, that's, that's my criticism is that I felt like they had too many people and they've just got this wayward group of kind of women who are kind of friends, but they're kind of frenemies. And when you throw in a, a plot that doesn't really make sense at all, it just kind of like watered down something that could have been cool and made it a little bit like, to be honest, I kind of suffered through it. Yeah, yeah. I think, so again, conceptually, I agree with you. I think, ultimately, I think they were looking at, look, what kind of movie is this? Let's make it a, a, a globetrotting spy thriller, right? And I... And, and, I hesitate to compare this to some, something like a James Bond or a Mission Impossible, but in that vein, right? Which is to yeah, say, right. right? Let's how, how many spy thrillers are out there, and how many of them are male dominated? Oh, there's yeah. quite a few. Okay, let's make a female centric serious spy thriller, right? I mean, there have, as, as an aside, Melissa McCarthy in Spy, I thought, did a hilariously good job. That's of it being a spy thriller, but a mm-hmm. comedic one, right? Not a serious yeah. one. Yeah. Whereas this one, they were like, okay, let's make a serious spy thriller. Let's make it something that can compete with James Bond, that can compete with uh, Mission Impossible, oh, and countless other spy one-off spy movies that are, again, male-dominated. But, Fine. I'm, but I'm okay with that, Pete. And I think back to Salt, Likewise. right? Angelina Jolie, I'm okay with that. 100%. And, and, and I love it when there's a very strong female character. I think that, not just because I love spy and thriller movies, but I think that a female can have a range that a man cannot. And I think sometimes you have a much, much deeper film. My, my problem with, I think, this movie is that I felt that I wasn't being sexist, but I felt that the characters were a little bit sexist where they tried to like wedge them into these scenes that you would traditionally see with dudes, you know, sitting at the bar, having beers, kind of telling your secrets, you know, all these kind of like little, not really jokes, but like comments about how it's, it's lonely and so forth. Like I felt that just kind of like marginalized the characters and the actresses. And I would have rather had a really solid movie with Jessica Chastain, Diane Kruger, going around Europe, kicking ass, trying to track down this MacGuffin, as you mentioned. I thought that would have been super cool. And both of those women have like enough street cred and acting chops and fighting skills where they could have made that a very compelling movie. And instead, we've got a beautiful psychiatrist. And then we've got kind of the the British, you know, like... Uh, she's i think technology she's like expert and this movie's version yeah. of uh you know the q. the q 
of yeah. Q slash not not even Q uh, uh, in Mission Impossible, you know, played by Simon Pegg. Yes, the guy yes. who's the, the computer hacker. But he's the foil, right? I mean, he's the comedic foil. Because That's the kinda, thing. That's what yes. I mean. This is what I, this right. is exactly what I mean in the sense that you can yeah. see parallels to a lot of these movies, yes. but it's done. The re- yeah. I have no problem with having an all-female cast or an all-male cast or whatever. My problem with these movies are just don't be generic. Yeah. Just don't be boring, right? Yeah. I it doesn't matter who it doesn't yeah. matter who is kicking whose butt, right? Yeah. Just have something and stick to it. Let let's not kid ourselves. Yeah. The Mission Impossible movies aren't exactly known for their great acting chops, right? No. But what they are known for is being good spy thrillers and with exceptionally well done action sequences. Yeah. And, and right? I would say there's something else. Those, those films also have a connection between the characters. Like we, we make fun of great chemistry. Yeah, yeah. We make fun of, we make fun of Fast and Furious because it has gotten super ridiculous. But, <laughs> yeah. but legitimately, all those cast members, even on screen, share a bond, and we sincerely believe that they're friends and that they would go out of their way for each other. Whereas this was just kind of like a hodgepodge of five random people yeah. that one are ready to shoot each other, and then after two or three kind of lines, they're all like, "Okay, well, let's just team up." And and irrespective of the fact that we're talking about. MI6, CIA, whatever the German equivalent is. Yeah. Some lady yeah. who doesn't even have security clearance and is, I mean, it, it just doesn't, it just doesn't, uh, make sense for me. And, and I think it's those disbeliefs that I have that just make me kind of like tune out and say, okay, I'm like, I'm going to watch this, you know, cause there's entertainment value and everyone's kind of like very pretty and I like the, the action, but I don't really believe in this as a storyline anymore. It's not giving me anything that I'm, I'm going to find memorable. Basically. Right, right, and that's a, so again that therein lies the rub, which is to yeah. say that it was that some of the action sequences were good, and they're all yeah. technically capable. They're all able to. They're all very good fighters. They're the all fighting, great the fighting. fighters, yeah. but it just seemed super mm. generic. It seemed like, for me anyway, I could see the the quote unquote twist as it were, the surprise towards the latter third of the movie. I saw that coming a mile away. Uh, It's just, these are all things that in... Can we say we're disappointed? Can we say we're disappointed? Disappointed only given the quality of the cast. The cast is so good. Every single Mm -hmm. one. This is one of the few times where the sum of the parts is not greater than the whole. Right, every individual person on this team, Penelope Cruz, uh, uh, Jessica Chastain, uh, Diane Kruger, all of them very good, very capable, excellent actors. All of them. I don't know so much about Fan Bingbing, so I'm going to hold off on commenting about her abilities or non abilities. But as a group I mean, overall, sh- sh- I have to imagine yeah. they're all very capable, and I know that they are. But yeah. Together, as you but, rightly said, yeah. it just it there was that no that chemistry. spark chemistry absolutely non-existent, and not having chemistry or spark can work again if it's just two characters who don't have that, and then throughout the course of the movie they build that chemistry together. We ha- we're happy to see that, right? We don't mind watching that. It's, again, like Hobbs and Shaw, or to a lesser extent, like mm-hmm. what happened in Red Notice, where you have two characters that, okay, they obviously had chemistry, but who are at loggerheads with each other, yeah. and then over the course of the movie, yeah. they start getting to be friends with each other. We don't have any of that here. So, so I mean, we were pretty, we were pretty rough with Red Notice. I mean, if you've got these two movies in front of you, You've got to watch one of them. Let's just say you're... Red Notice. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll tell you why. Yes, the other problem... Tell is me that why. This movie <laughs> was released theatrically by Universal. <laughs> yeah. I actually think this makes a better Netflix movie or a streaming movie than it does a movie that was supposed to be released in the cinema. But can I say something? I Red Notice has, I mean, of course, like a, a super ridiculous plot, but... 
uh, The Rock, and who was the other dude? Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds had super good chemistry. Absolutely. Uh, Gal Gadot, you know, I thought, you know, was equal to all of them on, on screen. But that movie has some zingers. There are some funny things that happen. Yep. Can you mention any line or scenario in the 355 that made you crack a smile or chuckle? Or even just gasp in awe, right? If you're and, talking and, about any of the action sequences, yeah. not, that's what, again, none of it. Absolutely not. How is it possible not. that there was not, I mean, and, and each of these actresses, to be honest, can be funny or witty. Not a single funny line, not a single funny scenario. You know, there's, it's so easy to put a scenario where people grab like the vase and it cracks easily. And then that's like all they've got to fight someone who's got a much bigger gun or something, right? I mean, there's so many like simple, simplistic humors that you can put in. Not a single time anything funny happened. And it doesn't even need to be a funny moment. It could even just be a really cool kick-ass fight yes, sequence i agree and yeah. there was none of that either like that I that agree. last fight sequence in the in the hotel room yeah. at the end of the movie right uh the yeah. penultimate one again you see the ending coming oh the one person in the group who's never fired a gun or who hesitates to go uh yeah. with violence saves the day yeah. by shooting someone yeah. you know what i mean like these are all they set up the tell so obviously as if to say yeah. It's almost as if I were in the corner of the screen and then when that sequence came up, you know, where she was just like, oh, and we lost your partner. He died. And then in the corner, you see me go wink, wink while tapping my yeah. nose. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's it. These are obvious tells. Yeah. So that's what I mean. Nothing stuck out. Nothing funny. Nothing hilarious. Nothing action worthy. None of that. Right. Tell me what movie. Tell me what movie you want to see. I mean, we, we we've now panned this a little bit. I mean, it's obviously not a you know torture to watch this movie. But again, I think when we we give our our opinions, we're we're not gonna you know recommend anyone to see it. How, how would you put together a movie that you think would be a compelling storyline? Just kind of like in this world, in like given yes. the three five five. Yeah, I think you have a movie where. Uh, uh, I would lose Fan Bing Bing. I would lose Penelope Cruz. I would keep Lupita yeah. because she, of the three of them, I think yeah. had the most potential yeah. for comedic chops. Yeah, she's the one who you know who is out of the game but gets pulled back in. Yeah, right. So she's the one, and she's also the one who has the most. Well, not the most, but mm-hmm. has a lot to lose than the fact that she's got her her business yeah. partner slash uh, romantic partner. Yeah. Uh, so she's the one who's like, okay, well, I'm not going to help you fight. I'm not going to punch anyone, but I'll be in the back. I'll be the one with the computer. You know, I'll be the tech yeah. wizard and the hacker. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think, I mean, you right. don't have to, can I just say something for the tech wizard for the hacker, which is, which can be an amazing role. You can really do a lot if you've committed to that, you know, profession for an actress. What is the point of breaking into a bathroom putting a trash can underneath a vent, crawling up the trash can, crawling into the vent. Like, it, it, like, it just seemed a little bit, like, unnecessary, like a forced... It's not even an action sequence. What, what is the point of that? Why do you have to be in the air vent? I, I mean, exactly. There's, yeah, there's a variety of... Go, go in the toilet. Go in the toilet. Sit in the lobby. Like, the, a phone booth. I mean, there's so many other things to do. So, I, I, again, I felt like... They wanted to involve her in the action sequence action. without yeah, exactly. actually without actually making her be you know an action hero. But yeah, they're like, well, you're we've got a Black Panther yeah. actor here yeah. who's yeah. in an action movie, who's yes. in a fight scene. We can't yes. waste her sitting yes. in a lobby. I agree. Let's throw but her in the middle of a bullet. Fl- uh, I agree. Thing. I agree. Uh, so let me tell. Let me take a stab at, at uh, reverse engineering this. Okay? okay, let's keep let's keep Sebastian Stan. Uh, who plays a pretty uh, good bad guy? Let's keep him as as that kind of role. What if we would do something kind of like Mr. and Mrs. Smith, right? The Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie, where the both right. kind of like secret agents. Let's do this with Jessica Chastain, Sebastian Stan. Sebastian Stan is kind of working an asset, and that asset is Diane Kruger. And then they find out that he's kind of like you know manipulating them. Right, he's trying to sides. turn her to the bad side. Yes. Right? 
And then they both kind of realize that they're being played by Sebastian. You know, first they want to shoot each other. Then they kind of realize they, you know, like they said, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. They start to team up and then they both go against, you know, Sebastian. For me, right. that's kind of a compelling, you know, you, you talk about you've got to suspend, what do you say? You've got suspend to like, disbelief? Yes, suspend disbelief. There's something where you've got two people who are supposed to be against each other and then they end up, they team up in the end against a common enemy, the man, Sebastian Stan, who kind of jilted both of them or was a double agent. That to me is a little bit more compelling. You can still have Lupita come in as, you know, the, the tech support. You could still have, you know, Fan Bing Bing, if you want, come in at the end and, and, you know, bring in, you know, the, the Chinese, you know, military element to this. There's a lot more that you can do, but I think that Penelope Cruz really kind of, her character, I mean, she's great, but I mean, I, I think the, the writing inclusion of her character just kind of didn't really make a lot of sense. And again, I can see MI6 and CIA kind of teaming up reluctantly. That seems plausible. But I mean, now we've got German. Now we've got MI6. Now we've got CIA. Then you've got a civilian from Colombia, right? I mean, it's just so many different uh, stuffs. I, I just felt it was, uh, it, was, it was combining them in a way that wasn't going to make anything nice. And, and it, I didn't find it compelling. But I would have yeah. liked to see you know, uh, Chastain and Kruger kind of team up against Sebastian Stan because I thought that he was a pretty asshole you know, uh, bad guy in this, actually. Yeah, I think, so, I think that already sounds a little bit better in terms oh, of what we got. And I think that it's certainly, let's put it this way, in any movie like this or in any uh Certainly in any spy movie like this, heist movies are a little different, but I think in spy movies, ensemble casts are very hard to pull off. So hard to pull off. I think a good spy movie, you leave the ensemble cast in such a way that if you really want Lupita Nyong'o in there, mm-hmm. have her in there as the director of MI6, who's in there for like a five minute cameo and then she's out. Because when you have that kind of star power, you don't want them, quote unquote, muddling the scene or stealing the scene every time. Because again, otherwise what you're going to end up doing is throwing her into an air vent in the middle of a shootout. Right? And I think spy (laughs) movies in general, you want to keep it simple. Right? When I say simple as in the plot should be complicated, not complicated, whatever. But you the, should, human, the human relationship should be simple. Super, super yes. simple in the sense yes. that I don't want to have to worry about, as a viewer, whether these two people are chemi- have chemistry, don't have chemistry, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. I am more concerned about the plot yeah. in a spy movie. Yeah. right? In a heist movie, it's a little bit of the, the plot is almost irrelevant because you know that they're trying to steal something. That's the MacGuffin. Yeah. What's interesting in heist movies are the twists, the subversions, and the cast. And the reason the twists are all the more powerful is because the ensemble cast has chemistry. So when you see that, when you see that twist, you're shocked by that twist. You don't get what's happening. And then all of yeah. a sudden you're like, whoa, that's crazy, right? Yeah. Like, think of the usual suspects. Yeah. Right? You think of even Ocean's Eleven. All these things that all these movies which have sh- shocking, not shocking, whatever, any kind of twist, you're just like, oh, great reveal, right? Yeah. Uh, let's look at a good spy movie that I recently resaw after a while. I thought it, I think it's called Spy Game with Robert Redford and Brad Pitt. A, oh, I love movie. that movie. I love that movie. Amazing movie. Great movie. An extremely well done spy movie. Oh wow! So emotional. And the yeah, no. only two spy, only two spy guys in there: Robert Redford, who plays a CIA handler. So it's not even yeah. that he's in the movie yes. all the time, every yes. scene, right? Yes. And Brad Pitt. And yeah. that's why you're just you're invested in the plot because you're not worried about so whether good. Brad Pitt and uh, and uh, uh, yeah. Robert Redford have chemistry, don't have chemistry. What's going yeah. on? This is what I mean. You want simplicity yeah. around the plot. The plot well, can be I, as I complicated as possible. Again. It is very good. Yeah. So, 
So I, this is what I mean in the sense that they think they were trying to make a good spy movie. I think they were trying to make a good action spy movie. I think what they've come up with is a very generic action spy movie. So, so this that, is something that, again, if you released it on yeah. Netflix, I'd be like, oh, yeah. that totally makes sense. Netflix spent $70 million to get these five superstars to potentially create a franchise. Makes a lot of sense. You know, one of the one of the hobbies you and I have is to kind of go through and assess cast motivation, right? Mm -hmm. we, we've been through this more than once. Sebastian Stan, you say, what's his motivation for joining this film? It gives him a character outside of, you know, the, the Marvel Avengers franchise. It doesn't require him to do a whole lot of range, you know, away from kind of this, uh, you know, strong silent type. You know, he's still in kind of this espionage, quasi-military, you know, it's it's consistent with his role. But mm -hmm. he gets to try something new. I see it. Edgar Ramirez, you know, this is star set the cast, gives him a good role. Fine. Lupita, same thing. Diane Kruger, she's German, hasn't been in a whole lot of, you know, like kind of uh, big box office type movies. That's great. Uh, bang, excuse bang, bang. me, National Treasure with Nicolas Cage. You know, I, I knew that. I did read that. I don't remember her from that. Oh. And although, was she amazing? What was her What was her character? She her played name? the, she was the, the, the fo not the foil. She was Nicolas Cage's love interest slash partner. But that's she was the one who movie. ran the Smithsonian before it got robbed. How long ago was that movie? Uh, probably 2002, 2003, something like that. You know Nick Cage so well. Yeah. yeah. Penelope, okay, so help me. Penelope Cruz, what, yeah. is her, what is her motivation? You're her agent. How do you sell her on this movie? She's not uh, a lead. I mean, okay, she's one of five leads, but she's not like the headliner. She's portrayed, you know, in a flattering way, obviously. Like, is it a paycheck? Is it she I think a it's lot a, of work? I think it's a paycheck, and I think it gives her a chance to potentially be back on the Western screens. Yeah. I, th I, I let's okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna go to IMDb. Do it. And yeah. I think I, I think you're right because it's it's basically like, hey, this is a good vehicle. To kind of keep you in the spotlight and know, and quote unquote yeah. relevant yeah. Yeah. to and the maybe people. That's it. It's a vehicle of relevancy, which is a very important role for an agent. Congratulations, you know, Pete, you're doing a great job representing her. But in terms of the character, I don't think you've got a whole lot to say. She's like, okay, that that sounds great. Tell me about the character, and you'd be like, ah, you know, you're going to be a very beautiful uh, psychologist, and that's it. And she said, like, that's it. So yeah, you can do it. I mean, I that's not to say she right? hasn't done a lot of work. She's done quite a few numbers. And uh, she's, uh, and she's but, the main, honestly, she's not just a pretty face. There's some actresses and dude. actors that they're only there just to be like super beautiful and to kind of strut around and look good. She's a very good actress. She's been in so many good things. Right? I, I love loved her, her in Vanilla Sky and Vanilla, I fell in I love with her say, from Vanilla Sky. I, I'm wagging my finger right next to you, Pete. Amazing in Vanilla Sky. Unbelievable in Vanilla so, Sky. So, you know, I think... And Requiem for a Dream. Uh -huh. uh, maybe, but I don't remember her oh, in that yeah. movie. But, but, but my point is that it's not that she hasn't been doing work. She's been working. Yeah. She's in. She's yeah. obviously a Hollywood star. But I feel like is, a lot of her... What else has she been in recently? It, that's the thing. I, so that's what I've been uh, looking at is relevancy. things that A, I don't really recognize and B, a lot of things that I think she's been doing like in Spain. Or in, you know what I mean? Like, or shows that are not in English. Yeah. So when you see that, you're just like, oh, well, you know, what was Penelope Cruz last in that I really remember? And I hate to say this, but for me, her role, her role was like <laughs> the seminal role for her was Vanilla Sky. And since then, he's like, yeah, you remember her in other movies, other roles, but mm, not so, so much, right? Let's she was on the Murder on the Orient Express. I saw that movie, oh, and I still wow. don't remember her fully in that role. Wow, you're right. It's uh, a little bit lean. A little bit I think lean. it's a little bit lean, given how good she is and how much I'm in love with her. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. In the sense that yeah. you'd want you you want everyone to work. Don't get me wrong, wow. but like someone like Penelope Cruz, you're like, man, I hope she's doing more and more and more yeah. because I want to see her on screen more and more and more. Okay, so that's Penelope Cruz. I agree with you. That's that's a relevancy, and that's that's reality. You're doing a great job as her agent. Tell me about Jessica Chastain. Sell her on this role. I think this is, one, a role for her because I think one Jessica Chastain has been one of the strongest voices in Hollywood for the equality of opportunity for women in, in, on the screen. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was Jessica Chastain. It could have been someone else, but I, let's give her the credit anyway. Um, I remember there was an interview I saw with uh, what is that actress name? Give me a second. There, was, it, I can't remember, but she was fighting for the right of uh, not just equality and representation, but in terms uh, of between races, but also for women in in Hollywood. And so this also lines up for Jessica Chastain. This also lines up not just in terms of that on a social standing or you know, or a social commentary, but I think also in lines up with what she's been doing recently, which has been a lot of action oriented movies. And like Jessica, Jessica Chastain is not someone that I know so much for being an action oriented, uh, you know, a kick ass, uh, actor, but the last couple movies she's played, she played a hitman, uh, right. Yeah. In Ava. Uh, So I think she, this is like, I'm not saying that this is her role going forward or yeah. her stereotype going forward, but I think she shifted more from hardcore oh, yeah. drama to a little bit more of, hey, I'm also a really physical actress. So I have to say, you know, there's you and I agree on some of these things, and I, but I saw them a little bit different. For me, I felt like she's typecast in kind of the same character. Ava... Uh, Molly's Game, Miss Sloan. Uh, what else was there that she was in? Uh, Zero Dark Thirty, where I felt like all of these characters, you know, she she plays a very strong, independent, I don't want to say vulgar, but like, you know, she's a, a fighter. Uh, you know, whether it's a physical fighter or, you know, just a... You know, kind of a. Uh, I hesitate to use you know, the word, from, but very "quote unquote" masculine role. Yes, right? yes, and 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 I feel like she's done that role and she's done it well. That this was just another Ava, and I liked her more when she was. I mean, she was in The Martian, small role. You know, she was in Interstellar. You know, not a main role, but like those are the types of roles that I think that she's such a good actress. She's so pretty. You know, she she has so much screen presence that I'd like to see her take one of those main roles and not play another CIA agent, yeah. you know, who's just, you know, sweaty and kicking and fighting, you know? Dramatic chops. And yes. the, the things that she's, I think, now becoming more famous for are a little yeah. bit more on the action side. And I'm not saying she can't do it because she obviously can, right? She's in great yeah. shape. She is yeah. kicking all kinds of ass on screen. Yeah. But... Uh, if I have to choose between her going into a dramatic role or into an action role, I'd prefer yeah. to see her in a dramatic role. I, I'm totally with you. I'm I totally think she's you. a much better actress yeah. uh, as a dramatic actor than mm-hmm. she is as, you know, your typical. And again, like, you know, your when you think of action movie, action uh, got actor, male actors, you think of guys like The Rock. You think of guys yeah. like Vin Diesel. You don't think of yeah. them for dramas. I'm not saying that yeah. they can't do it. I'm just saying you don't yeah. typically think of them as that role. And yeah. when I think of someone like Jessica Chastain, I think she does such a good job that it's yeah. almost a waste to have her in an action-oriented uh, role over a dramatic-oriented role. Yeah, I agree. I mean, but that, that being said, I understand her need for a a lead character in something that is... is a, should I say a series or something that can have, you know, like multiple franchise schools. potential, right? Yeah. Franchise potential. You're right. I, I, and, and, and maybe that's what's, you know, missing, you know, the feather in her cap that's missing a little bit is, you know, there needs to be a franchise potential. And if you're not going to play, you know, one of the, the X-Men, or if you're not going to play someone in MCU, 
you know, if you're not Wonder Woman, there's kind of limited opportunities for that. But I don't think that the 355 is it. I think you could create a super cool character, whether it's a, you know, a James Bond-esque, you know, type CIA agent or, you know, like Salt for Angelina Jolie. I thought Salt was a very good role that probably deserved a sequel, you know, but it, it could be something like that. Um, but I, I don't think the 355 is something that I feel super excited about having a, a second, you know. Uh, just and like I don't Ocean's, think it's going to pay no. off in, in box no. office. I just don't yeah. expect it to. Yeah. But is there, is, there some, is there some common thread that we can draw from? This isn't male or female, but just in terms of these movies that have had ensembles. You know, Ocean's, Ocean's 10, 11, 12 were all good. But for me, despite the number of people... That is a Brad Pitt. Um, yeah, George right? Clooney. Yeah, that, that Brad is, Pitt, that is, George Clooney, yeah. Matt Damon are the three headliners. Yes, the real that, that, headliners. Yeah, and and Damon's really a little bit minimized, but that's really a that's based on the Pitt um, Clooney, Clooney yeah. friendship, and then Damon coming in kind of as the young comedic. Yeah, and you see that yeah, growth right. over the three, right? Right. Yes, yes right. He starts yes. off as the the yes. the son of a colleague. Yes. And so he's Correct. the rookie. And yes. then he, so that's the chip on his shoulders that everyone yes. sees him as the rookie. And Correct. he's trying to break out over that so that yes. he can become the rusty yes. or that he can become the Danny. Yes, I think that's right. So, I mean, I think even though that had a lot of people, it's really about two friends, you know, who, who set up, a, bring a team together for a yes. heist. Yeah. You know, um, you know, we talk about, you know, like Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters is three guys at the most, right? I mean, the, a lot of these, you know, even if we look at Fast and Furious, Fast and Furious is... Yeah, it was really about Vin Diesel and Paul Walker, right? Yeah, it was really about those two. Everyone else kind of supported them. Yeah, then they were the quote-unquote family around them. Yeah, they built them out. Then it went to kind of like, you know, uh, Hobbs and Shaw, right? I mean, Hobbs took... Then it was kind of Hobbs and Diesel for a while. So again, I mean, it's it's... There's always like a few headliners and then everyone kind of fills them in, even if they're big names. And I think it's just really difficult when you have these, you know, unless it's like the rom-com, like New Year's Eve or, you know, Love Actually, unless it's something like these rom-coms where it's a lot of different, you know, like couples, it's super hard to have a good movie that has too many headliners in it. Inglorious Bastards, right? Inglorious Bastards is about Brad Pitt. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Him, right. well, Brad Pitt and Christopher Waltz, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I, I think it's just uh, a little bit, like you said, the whole is not necessarily greater than the sum of its parts when you have a whole lot of parts. Yeah, yeah. It's it, And again, yeah. why, why it's important to remember that is because it's a very hard thing to do. Yeah. And in this genre... It's not necessarily the best thing to do, right? Even Mission Impossible understands that, and they say, "Hey, yeah. look, it's Ethan Hunt, mm -hmm. and it's Tom Cruise, mm -hmm. and that's it. It's really Tom Cruise, and uh, there's a couple other guys, Simon Pegg, and uh, oh my God, Ving Rhames. They're, yeah. they're all there, but they're really there and only. Jeremy Renner, Jeremy Jeremy Renner, right? And they tried. Bob, uh, they, Bob Renner. Yeah. The, all of these guys who are good, good actors and powerful presences yeah. on their own, yeah. they're really only there to kind of prop support. up and support. Yeah. That's it. Everything else is kind of like, okay, we're here, we're there. It doesn't matter. So, uh, Pete, we saw the 355. What's your rating? Cinema, uh, wait, or skip it? Definitely not Cinema. I am on, I'm going to be generous, okay? So I think as a rule of thumb, I want to be generous because I like Hollywood and I want, you know, I like media of any kind. So oh, the pandering. It's pandering. between, yeah, yeah. So this one goes out to all my fans. <laughs> 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 Who, by the way, are the greatest fans in the world. Uh, I will say that if, if I had to give it a rating, which I do, I'm going to give it a wait for a streaming platform. And I'll go so far as to criticize that further by saying a streaming platform that you already own. Um, 
I appreciate that. Appreciate your honesty and transparency. Uh, I'm also thinking of my fans, all of them, and uh, encourage them to ignore this. Uh, I like a lot of things about the movie. I like all the the cast, but to be honest, uh, this is not the best use of your time. If you have nothing else to do in your time and you have access to this movie, um, it won't ruin your life. But uh, we all have to make some you know tough choices in life. And if you've got an hour and forty five minutes, I recommend that you do something else with that hour and forty five minutes. You won't be missing out on anything by not seeing this. And and that's kind of where I come down on this. A stinging rebuke from Ethan. Hmm. Okay. So that's the 355. We'll see if there's a 356 in the future or a 352 Parabellum. What would be a good name for a sequel? Uh, Agent 355 um, Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pete. Appreciate you right. going through this with me. I think we, we knocked it out. Uh, what do we have coming up next? Or is that going to be a surprise for this Uh In terms of movies, not sure. Oh, at some point, we are going to do a recap of the entire season of The Book of Boba Fett. Yes. And we're also going to do a recap of the entire season of Peacemaker. The Peacemaker. The Peacemaker. That's right. So we're at least one at the time of recording. We're at least one week away from the recap of the book of Boba Fett, and at least two fe- uh, two weeks away from uh, the Peacemaker. I'm itching to to give my thoughts on both of those. I'm itching. Likewise. Likewise. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for listening to another episode of Films and Stuff. If you haven't already, please subscribe and review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever podcasts are downloaded. Films and Stuff. There is no substitute.